Welcome to the Pet Loss Companion. I'm Ken Dolan Del Vecchio, and I'm here with my friend and co-author and co-host, Nancy Saxton Lopez. And this is a program that we do every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And it is a way to reach forward with the content of our book, which is called The Pet Loss Companion, Healing Advice from Family Therapists Who Lead Pet Loss Groups. This is a book that Nancy and I wrote that's based on many, many years, 30 plus years in Nancy's case of facilitating pet loss support groups. And now with this medium, we can continue to interact with people and and share some insights and share some of your stories yes. about this very, very challenging part of having an animal companion in our lives. And we do very much like for you to engage with us. So please feel free to send us your stories, your questions, your suggestions for guests. And you can reach me at kenddv at gmail.com. And you can reach Nancy at n s a x t o n l o p e z at c s m p c dot com. That's n saxton lopez at c s m p c dot com. You are welcome to offer some support for the program. You can do that through Venmo and you can do that through PayPal. You can also subscribe, be a monthly subscriber. We, of course, would appreciate your support, but it's absolutely not essential. Your participation and your, your engagement with us is why we do this more, more so than for any other reason. The program is a friend of Dakin Humane Society in Springfield, Massachusetts. And you can learn more about Dakin by reading the description of our program. Dakin is also the supporter of a pet loss support group that I deliver over Zoom every second Tuesday of the month from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And you can learn more about Dakin, the pet loss support group meeting that I facilitate, and also how to donate to Dakin by going to dakinhumane.org. That's D-A-K-I-N-H-U-M-A-N-E.org. And I think that's it for our intro. That Nancy. is it. Now, we have gotten quite a few heart-wrenching, heartbreaking, and heartwarming stories um, that have come in. Um, and the past few weeks, you know, we were live uh, for the last two weeks. And we're going to have at least two stories today. We have some that we'll do in the future. Um, one is um, from, I believe, Allie that Ken's going to read. And she is from Australia. Um, and she has a Kelpie. And that Kelpie was her teammate. And so mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting that that gives another dimension, you know, to her, the human animal bond for her. Um, and then we also will have one that I will read from Eric, who we talked to a year ago um, about Sneer. And he, he wanted to follow up at, on an anniversary. And we'll be talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. So Ken, you want to talk and um, read Allie's email? Sure. So Allie writes, hi, firstly, I'm okay with this being shared. We always appreciate yeah. if people are willing to have their story shared because it's so helpful to others. However, if you're not comfortable sharing, but you still you want to be yeah. in touch with us, you can certainly be in touch and we'll correspond with you offline. Firstly, I'm okay with this being shared. On Monday night, I lost my whole world, my best friend, my heart dog, Blaze. He was my very first, my first very own dog. We competed in dock dogs, so he was also my team member and my hero. We traveled around Australia competing, flying together, staying in hotels together, and putting on a show together. And while I don't know a lot about dock dogs, it is an aquatic competition. Yeah for dogs. So it sounds like it's really interesting and it's something that Blaze and Allie enjoyed very much. He is a 10-year-old Kelpie cross and in the last six weeks he's been through so much and unfortunately at the end he was ready to go on his next big adventure and leave us behind so heartbroken. He had a spinal surgery six weeks ago and during that they found he had acute pancreatitis 
but he made it as he always does. He's tough. He never shows pain and he came home. During his six week post-op, they noticed he had jaundice and did some tests and found his gallbladder was about to explode. So they had to, on an emergency basis, go in and put a stent in. Even after this huge surgery, he woke up and was doing well at the vet. A few days in, he got a couple of infections and the vet advised she thought he would be okay, but maybe go and see him to cheer him up. We went to spend time with him and I was planning on staying the night with him. The vets took him out to pee with us and when they lay him back down in the cage, he was gone. Within one second, he was gone and they all grabbed him and did CPR for 16 minutes, but nothing could save him. I couldn't look away in hopes that he would start breathing, but nothing worked. I've worked with deceased pets for a long time in pet cremation. So I'm used to seeing pets not make it, but not my very own baby. One of my questions is every single time Blaze got seriously ill or attacked by other dogs many times in his life, he always pulled through. So we had always, we always been used to worrying about him, but then he would turn out to be fine. And this time, of course, he wasn't fine. And that has been really hard. How do we deal with the fact that he should have been coming home right now? He should be in the lounge recovering from surgery, and he isn't. Also, I find thinking about ever getting another dog, I think about how I would resent them for trying to be Blaze or even our current other dog. She isn't Blaze and it's not her fault, but we don't have the same bond that I had with him. Thanks for having this outlet for me and to get these words out. It's nice to be able to talk about him and how I'm feeling, Allie. So she said a lot in that short note. She, she did say a lot in a, in, in a few paragraphs. I mean, first of all, the human animal bond, you know, is, is strongly there because not only was Blaze her, her beautiful beloved child, but mm -hmm. he also was her teammate and she they did a lot of competitions and they were always together. Yeah. And they worked as a team. And, and when you do agility or this canine aquatics or whatever that is, you know, there's such a connection. You know, because there has to be, right? Yeah. Um, any it, kind of competitions when you see with animals. So, Blaze it, it reminds me. It reminds me also. Just, just to jump in, it reminds me also about the ways that we feel about horses. Yes. People who had a, exactly. had a horse that you are very much in a team relationship with them, even if you're not in competition, and you may be in competition of one sort or another, but the partnership is there always. And so here, this this wonderful dog, you know, survived so many different, um, I guess, was attacked and, and different different types of injuries of some sort. And so, yes, she would definitely think and hope yep. that he would have pulled through this. Time. Yeah, it, it it speaks so much to the way that denial operates and you can just see it in her words that we know he's not going to come home and he's not going to be on the lounging but we at the same time we don't know it you know we 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 are in a state where we're just it just doesn't seem real and doesn't seem possible it doesn't seem like this could possibly happen he'd recovered so many times yeah. and that quite the, the way she phrases it is so it's so descriptive of what it feels like right. that we just, you know, how do I, how do I deal with the fact that, that he should have that, been coming home right now? This is right. what she writes. <clears throat> that he, he should be on the lounge mistake. recovering from surgery and he isn't. Now and, there were multiple things that was going on with him though, I believe leading up to his death. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, of course that complicates things and she yep. would know that and, and she's in the field to some degree. So all of a sudden, there's one thing that creates another thing. Pancreatitis is a very dangerous disease. Yeah. For, for yeah. Animals. At and, any age. Yeah. You know, I, and when I did my stand up Blue Pearl, there were a lot of dogs that came in with pancreatitis. 
And so some made it, some didn't. Um, but yeah, there right. were some other things, you know, the surgery and so forth that was going on in the place. And I, I and I think I, I what struck me was when they had taken him out to urinate and brought him back in and then he died. Yeah. Right? So here, you know, she's anticipating that he's going to be better. And that and that shock of just watching them doing CPR on her dog, there wasn't, it wasn't like, even though it's a, such a hard decision to make to euthanize, but you have that anticipation going on, right? So now this is a shock. Yep. He's died, he's died, you know, yep. and I yep. can't even imagine, you know, what she, what she was going through. So painful. And also it speaks in some ways to the common experience of a pet dying in a way after saying a final goodbye, after at least being able to see their human being and then going, going into their transition right after that. And so it's, it's something that she was able to be there. I mean, I think that that's really yes. a, a great thing that she was able to be there just prior to, him leaving that was i mean even though it was not expected yes yeah. because i remember when molly died we weren't there right yeah. we, we found out that she had died yeah and it was during covid and it was lucky that i knew the people at blue pearl and i they let us in you know to see her after her death but you know i mean it was a shock enough to know that she had gone but we weren't there for her yeah. You know, and that, and I was not there for Tashi when my first pug, and that always has stayed. Oh, that's real. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And I've talked about Jack who died when we were on vacation and, yeah. oh my gosh, we were, in, we were in Barcelona when we learned that he had died. And that's, yeah. that's hard. Yeah. That's really and hard. And you also had the experience similar to Ellie with, was it Isabel or, or, or um, Abigail when she was, she was, you were, she was dying, but all of a sudden she died. You know what I mean? She Both was, of them, really. Both of them were like Both that, of right? them. They kind of went into crisis, and then it was very quick, actually. It was very quick. It was the end. They, they, I mean, Isabel died from congestive heart failure. Abigail's death looked very similar, actually, but she hadn't been diagnosed with anything, really. Um, and she was thought to be doing better. She had been to the bed a couple times just before that. And that's a similar, too, right? Allie was thinking, well, yeah. look place is going to get better that's been the pattern yep and then that, that didn't happen yep and of course you know she has all these feelings about you know how am i how can i live with this right that this has happened um because it is so sudden and i think the shock it, the shock takes a period of time yeah to wear off the denial and the shock yeah, it comes and goes, right? It comes and goes and it's very nonlinear and and you just kind of take one step forward and then another one and then another one. She talks also about her mixed feelings about getting another dog because in saying if she were to get another dog, she might blame it for not being played. Well, clearly she's thinking about getting another one, right. but she's got a lot of ambivalence about that, which is, again, it's just very, very typical. And they actually yes. have at least one other dog she mentions, and she knows that she doesn't have these kinds of mixed feelings about that dog because no. she already has a relationship with that one. And so it's very complicated. And the, and the, 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 the idea that comes to mind to, for me immediately is it'll, it'll probably take some time before she feels like, it makes sense to get another dog right. and that and that's really what you want to do is allow yourself the time uh, to kind of settle where you feel and whether or not, and what kind of dog. And because this was an extraordinarily special relationship. This was, this was what you would call a heart dog. I would call yeah, her familiar, right. very, very special. And she needs to, come to some sort of place of calm or peace regarding that, at least to a certain extent before 
she might be ready to welcome another pet. And and also for Allie, we we have more. We can have more than one heart dog. I know that that's hard because right now you're not feeling that, and even yeah. the, the dog that you're with, you love. We know you love that dog, but of course it can never be Blaze, right? Blaze yep. is unique. No, and, they're not replaceable. You know, you each feel, relationship is unique. Absolutely, and you can yeah. feel like you're betraying him a little bit. Yeah. But he would never, ever have any malice or judgment if you get another dog. No, I mean, but yeah, that's it's hard because we're so so conscientious and so yes. devoted. Yes. And and there are moments where you feel like opening one's heart again in that way will feel like a betrayal. And yeah. we, we all go through that. And then we realize that that's not the way anybody who loved us the way our pets do would feel about it. They wouldn't cling to, they wouldn't want us to be without that kind of companionship no. again. They, it's not the way it and works. And it's interesting because we just got another email um, and it and what happened, and we'll be doing that in, in future podcasts, but her cat died, but she immediately felt that her cat was telling her to take this other cat, I believe. He was sick, right? And so, and she was adamant about that, right? So even though her beloved cat had died, she almost immediately, you know, took on this other cat because she believed, and we'll, we will be telling that story, um, that the cat who had died was telling her, please, you, you should do this. So, you know, it depends. It's always, it's a, it's a unique experience for everybody. What, what, make sense to do next what the next step should be yes. it's very there's no formula no not, <laughs> and that and that's fine because yeah. it's all unique um so ali thank you um, yes thanks ali thanks for sharing with us and now we have eric eric had contacted us about a year ago after sneer died um and he he's he had wrote to us and said, I'm not sure if you remember me. My dog Sneer passed away last August, and it was a troubling time for me. I wrote to you about the heartache and pain his passing caused me as he was my constant companion for eight years since he was a puppy. He was the first dog that ever bonded with me, and we were very close. I wanted to thank you again for your support through that time as your emails were very kind. He was not perfect, but he was the most loyal guy, and I loved him fiercely. I loved him fiercely. Today is his birthday, and it's caused me to write to you, as it's extremely painful to know that he should have been here, if not for the disease that took him away, IBD, as he was otherwise healthy. I seem to be in a bit of a funk, as it's an emotional day with a lot of old memories and sorrows that have been hitting me for the past few weeks. I find that I'm saddened quite a lot and miss him terribly. We did end up rescuing another Roddy. He is a great dog and has bonded similarly with me, and so I'm thankful for that. I continue to think that maybe I could have done more for Sneer. The doctor indicated that she thought we could go longer with treatment. I just could not bear to see him in so much pain and losing so much weight. I continue to think that maybe a miracle would have occurred and I made the mistake, so I'm wrapped with guilt. Maybe he could have recovered. I don't know. I just know that I wanted more time with him. We always want more time with babies. Pictures and videos are not enough. Did I do him a disservice? Should I have given him another week or two? I don't know. He was so loyal to me. Was I not to him? I don't know the answers to these questions. I do know that I never wanted him to be in pain and I wanted to safeguard him from that. It's hard to look back at the good times with him as the memories constantly trigger sadness. I was very attached to him, probably as much as he was to me. It was a strong bond. Later, we will sing happy birthday to him and post pictures of him to remember. The picture last year of him on his last birthday with all his toys is heartbreaking to me. I just wanted to let you know that it's a struggle even almost a year later. I don't know when the saddest will end. And looking back on him will just be good memories and happiness. Maybe I miss him too much. 
Our new dog is really a good pup. His name is Cheese. He has been a blessing, not a replacement. Have really enjoyed his company and his bond, but nothing can replace what I had with Sneer. Thank you for listening. I just wanted to reach out because there is no one I can really express this stuff to in this way. I hope you will. So there are similarities here between, you know, Eric and Sneer and Allie. So, so it's, I, I, I really am thinking about the, the sentence he said that the new pup is a, is a, not a replacement, he's, he's a blessing. but a blessing. <clears throat> yes. and that's just really beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to say. But the thing that, that's so powerful about this letter is how, how the kind of intensity mm -hmm. that an anniversary can bring. Yes, it can. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same, not exactly. I mean, there's a, there's a bit of a different perspective, of course, but the intensity of grief is deep. I mean, it's yeah. really something in this letter. And he's he's revisiting the yes. same questions. Was it the right time? Did I do Did enough? I make the right decision? Did I do did I should he have had a couple more weeks? Am I was I being disloyal? There's all these questions that are almost as fresh as they were a year ago when when this loss actually happened. And I think that it's important for people to understand that that's very normal for some yeah. people. It's very normal for this to be, to just reawaken with a ferocity that you might not expect at all. And actually when I, when I wrote back to Eric, I mentioned that it's kind of a season of remembrance for, for me and my husband, because we lost, Isabel, June 19th last year, we lost Abigail, August 23rd. And so this season is, yeah. is reminiscent of those losses. And it's very, it's very hard to even kind of grab onto the reality that it's been that long. It just doesn't right. feel it's like It's almost that been a year, right? It's yeah. been a year. Right? And it, it, so we need to be ready for this to happen and and again like not like discount it or not feel like there's something amiss there's nothing us. wrong this, yeah. this can't this these events and it could be not just i mean he had a um there was a birthday with sneer there was a death with sneer at this around the same time so you know it's not just that but some anything could trigger that right that will bring yeah. all of this back up which is yep. so normal um, you know, a song, you know, yeah, going yeah. down to the beach, um, yeah. whatever that is that you had with your animal, the hikes that, yeah. that people take. Yeah. And I, I, I really like that they have, they, they describe at least one ritual. Eric describes at least one ritual. And I, and I get the feeling he's going to do it with a, a family member or partner. I don't, I don't recall his, his family situation, but that, they were going to sing happy birthday, right? Yeah. They were, they were, hey, listen, and that's so nice, right? Yeah. They're, it's, it's, they're celebrating Smear. Yeah. Any celebrating. kind of, any kind of ritual can help to process the, the feelings that you have because there's something that goes beyond words with a ritual, whether it's a song or whether it's, whatever lighting yeah. candles and right. having a moment of re recollection or whatever it may service. be visiting the grave visiting right. or visiting where they're where you scatter their ashes a memorial garden whatever you know it's interesting because i mean people do that i just had a client who said that they on you know father's day they went they go to visit the grave father right yeah. so and that can happen on birthdays it can happen on a holiday and so it's the same thing with us with our animals you know that we and that might happen every day for the rest of your life yeah you say happy birthday to some neurons yeah i have a i have a where i buried one of my cats diana i planted a whole bunch of coreopsis and they're you know they're in 
full bloom right now. And I always see, I mean, I'm always outside working in this area and I see them and I think of her and it's very, mm -hmm. it's very soothing actually. She's, right, that she's, she's there. Here, with you. She's there. Right. And sometimes I talk to her a little bit <laughs> and, and that's, that helps because I mean, she, she died tragically and yeah, she was hit by a car, wasn't was she? Either that or a coyote. I don't really oh, know well, exactly, yeah, but I think she probably got hit by a car. And she was a barn cat, and she had the run of the property and whatnot. And and she that was before I put up, I put up the fence in her honor all around the inner garden. And uh, it just helps to have some kind of point of reference, some kind of ritual that is ongoing. And all of that... You know, we need to just keep in mind that grief goes on and on. Well, we talk about that a lot on the yeah. podcast, right? That you never yeah. stop grieving, but it's not, it's, it's just, it's just there. It's, it's, it's there. It's, it's not it's incapacitating. Dream, right. It's just yes. part of your everyday life. And, and, but and there are punctuation up. points. There are times exactly. when it kind of, as you said, when it kind of flares up. And we deal with those in the ways that Eric is describing. We, we talk about it. We have special events that, that help us remember. And, and we just keep going. And, and also, he, he's moved forward and has new relationships in this world with, with his new dog, with Cheese. I love that name. <laughs> Sneer and <love> Cheese. <laughs> it's I love great. It. Um, so it's, and it's important and memorials, you can do yeah. any memorial at any point for however long you need to. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rituals, memorials always help because yep. it brings them closer, you yep. know, because they are part of your, of your life, but now they're in your hearts forever. Right. And yep. 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 So, so we thank Eric for yeah, sharing once again, you. and we hope that that everybody whose heart is touched by grief is is finding some peace in the in the days ahead. We hope so. Yeah. Let's take care. Always of good. Yourself. Always good talking with you, Nancy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, take care. Talk next week. Yep. Take care, everyone.